Greetings, everyone. It's great to be with you again. And we'll have our presentation on the laws of life. First, though, we'll have a period of meditation. And we're going to use the image of emblem 21 from uh, the traditional Rosicrucian Michael Mayer's multimedia work entitled Atalanta Fugians. In it, in a way, embodies much of what we're dealing with in terms of talking about the laws of life. Uh, the traditional tenets of the order are subtly imbued and, and uh, indicated in this special diagram. We have here uh, the master geometer or the master teacher drawing with the great Masonic compasses, the large compasses that a, 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 a mason in stone uh, would use to build a cathedral like Durham Cathedral we talked about earlier. It's, it embeds in it, you'll see um, the law of duality with the male and female uh, here, the uh, microcosm of the small circle if the law of correspondence with the macrocosm of the, of the large circle. We have the squares solidity and stability associated with the four elements and uh, the four traditional humors of the body and so forth, as well as we have the law of perfection or the law of manifestation or the law of triangle uh, here that I'll describe more in our, our presentation. Take a little time to reflect on this diagram because it'll be a helpful inspiration for our ascent to the heights of the celestial sanctum. In a way, the diagram symbolizes all the laws and principles of the Rosicrucian order that are within us and around us. And as we apply them at every opportune moment, we can be fully of service and self-masters. Now let's take time to turn inward in meditation. So you may wish to uh, close your eyes and let go of the cares of the day. Have your spine upright is my suggestion. You can meditate as you wish, or you may follow the direction and guidance that I will provide is your choice. I suggest you have your hands in your laps, palms down. If you're seated in a chair, feet flat on the floor, legs forming a right angle at the knees. Take a few deep neutral breaths. In doing this, we'll apply the Rosicrucian law of ontology by which we become a living being. By taking in, breathing in the cosmic essence, starting from our birth in this incarnation. And it's viewed with the spirit energy or the other polarity. So we're applying the law of duality and the law of polarity as well. We we'll also apply the law of vibration, feel the rhythm of the breath, part of the the rhythm in all things throughout existence. Everything manifests through vibration. As we learn to increasingly apply these laws in our lives, we become more fully ourselves. We're fully able to help others. We're fully able to complete our mission in life. As you're taking the deep breaths, you may feel a tingling in the body, not from a lack of, lack of oxygen, which can feel a little bit like pins and needles, but a tonic effect and enriching tingling. That's the life force being quickened in the microcosm that you are. In the temple of the holy master that you are. Now let us begin our ascent to the heights of celestial sanctum. We'll apply the law of creativity as we rise up over the room where we are, over the home or building where we are, up over the city or general geographic place where we are. Rising up faster and faster and have a great view of the surrounding province or state. 
and then ultimately the entire country, and then the entire hemisphere. Faster and faster, you can see the beautiful blue jewel of the earth. Beautiful sphere, I believe spheroid. Rising up faster and faster, see the entirety of the solar system, the fiery ball of the sun, and the beautiful planet Mars, the reddish planet we've been seeing in the night sky recently. See the other planets, Saturn and the large planet Jupiter. Sense this stupendous system and order as the revolutions of these planets about the sun. And let's rise up faster and faster transcending space and time. So we can go faster than the speed of light. We don't have those physical limitations. Use your imagination to achieve this in fact. Sense the great spiraling motion of the Milky Way galaxy, which we call our home. And let's go out from the great arm close to our home and look back at the great spiraling galaxy. Inspired and lifted by its beautiful design. What a beautiful home we have to live in. And let's rise up faster and faster and beyond myriad stars and all the different phenomena of space, the pulsars, the quasars, the black holes, the binary stars, the supernova, speed past nebulae and other galaxies, other spiraling galaxies, take in this stupendous harmony and order of the universe, which we call by the Greek term cosmos. As you travel faster and faster, use everything you've got within yourself to move. Do not be passive at this time. We're in the polarity of activity, inward activity now. And you may sense the great rotation a revolution of the universe itself about a great cosmic axis. As you speed forward and enjoy the beauty and exhilaration of the ascent, head towards the cosmic axis, particularly its midpoint, where is your celestial sanctum. And let us invoke the law of purification. And again, the law of duality by saying, may the divine essence of the cosmic confuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may enter the celestial sanctum in a tune of pureness and in worthiness. And we'll say in the Rosicrucian tradition, use the phrase moat to mean truth so moat it be now enter into your celestial sanctum and feel not only the exhilaration of the ascent but the exhilaration of being in a beautiful setting you may find it as an inspiring temple or inspiring place in nature or some place sacred to you that you find uplifting fill in the sights and the sound of the outer outer mind Apply the law of duality, because we'll turn to the other polarity to turn inward. And activate the outer part of the mind, the sights and the sound, so it can be ennobled, enriched, and engaged. As we turn more and more inward. Maybe there's some ritual that the chief executive officer, the imperative order is conducting at this time with the grand masters. Since others of like mind and other Rosicrucians with you, Take this as a time to commune. Give yourself permission to let go of the cares of the day. This is a time to be recharged, rejuvenated. And when you're ready, dwell there in peace profound. We'll apply the law of duality, have that inner polarity that will unify gradually through the law of unity. So take some time to dwell in profound peace.
If you find your mind wandering, just gently and lovingly apply the law of love. No judgment, just come back, dwelling in the celestial sanctum, the center of existence, the center of your being. Apply the law of silence to move more deeply inward. Now, as we continue to dwell in the heights of the celestial sanctum, let us apply the law of vibration and the law of attunement, specifically the law of cosmic attunement. In this meeting place of minds, centered on the cosmic mind, the highest rates of vibration are available to us. Let us sense the cosmic mind within us and pervading the cosmos around us. Transfer or assume your consciousness to the cosmic mind. Become one with the cosmic mind. Be the cosmic mind. Assume the cosmic mind now. In this manner, we fully invoke the law of unity to be one with the one. While we're in the state of oneness with a cosmic mind, let us invoke a further law, that of the law of service. Let us participate in the work of the Rosicrucians refer to as the silent council in conjunction with the council of solace of our Grand Lodge. All those who've petitioned for metaphysical aid, special assistance that can be spiritually directed to them and to all those in need at this time, through your affiliate bodies, frontline workers, all sentient beings throughout the cosmos that are in need, let us radiate love and well being while we're at one with the cosmic mind. You may wish to picture light, that is, system and order and knowledge, at one point of a triangle, and at the other point of a triangle, life, that vitality and well being merging to where the other, to the apex of the triangle. And there they form love and just let it radiate out like a supernova, a great beam of light, life and love throughout the cosmos to all those in need at this time. Just let it radiate out from the heart and the mind. Feel it flowing out from you. Like a great surging forth 
from your being. You'll sense that those who are receiving in need by increased rate of flow from you. And at a certain point, you may not even have to concentrate on the flowing. It'll just continue naturally from your being. And when that happens, just dwell in peace profound again, letting the flow of life, vitality, and love, well-being to continue. I think you'll find too is the law of karma or the law of compensation. Just as you've given unselfishly and radiating love and well being as an act of metaphysical aid, you'll find that there's a tonic effect in your own being that as you've given, so you're receiving. Even though it wasn't your attention. Before we conclude this explicit work, a silent counsel in conjunction with the Council of Solace. Let us say, if it pleases the cosmic, it is done. So mote it be. Rosicrucians use the term cosmic to mean all natural and spiritual laws, the entirety of the cosmos, and the great universal intelligence back of it, which we are attuning with now. Now let us undertake further spiritual operations associated with the Rosicrucian Order Amorc and spirituality in general. Assured that our aid will continue radiating from us as part of our purpose in life. Let us invoke the law of gratitude. Thank all those who've helped guide us in our life those who have helped us with important lessons in our life. Let us radiate love to them, thankfulness. I think you'll find in invoking the law of gratitude, it implicitly invokes the law of cosmic attunement because you'll find yourself uplifted, feeling a deep sense of love and well being. And expressing gratitude, something we can do throughout our day to help us attune with the cosmic, be guided inwardly. Now let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. As we exit out from the celestial sanctum, may I wish to say a prayer, thanks, for this opportunity to be of service, this opportunity to be guided with a God within or the ma master within. And let us begin our descent past the myriad nebulae and galaxies, going faster and faster. It would come back to the great spiraling galaxy, the Milky Way, and enter in back into the great arm where our home is, speeding faster and faster towards the solar system. 
beautiful blue jewel of earth, come back to their hemisphere and our country, our state or province, our city or specific geographic location, the building where we were and the room. And we can say together, may the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum. So mote it be. Our final invocation also applies many laws. Such as the law of transmutation. And when you're ready, you may wish to open your eyes and stretch. Apply the law of balance. So you feel a deep sense of the oneness with you fully active with the objective consciousness, the subjective consciousness, and the subconscious. In a balanced, unified state, for they are one. And open your eyes now if you haven't already, and we'll begin further our work and worship of the day with the presentation. Great, thank you everyone. So in our presentation on the laws of life, I will say by way of introduction or in the wake of our meditation, that life has a deeper meaning and richness and fullness that has always been waiting for us to increasingly realize. We have a great deal to learn and part of the process is unlearning what we find is in, incorrect or no longer serves us well. This process at times can seem daunting to the finite resources of the outer self. However, through the guidance and infinite resources of our divine nature, the divine within, all is known and all are loved. We are greatly fortunate to have access to the full range of natural and spiritual laws. These matters are presented and demonstrated to us and within us daily through our Rosicrucian studies and other means. The purpose of this presentation is to further draw us into self-mastery. That is the full maintenance of light and life and hence wise action and love as a living, as living vibrant realities in our lives. We'll do this by discussing and reviewing some of the major natural and spiritual laws. When I use the term master within, uh, or inner self, what we're referring to is that, that our deepest nature that works with our outer nature. You know, our outer nature's purpose um, is many. It has the senses to help us be aware of our surroundings. There's a protective, a protective element. Um, it also gives us information to our inner nature, our reasoning to, re, uh, to reason on. But the outer nature's purpose or job is not to guide us in an over way in our life, overall way in our life. That job is for our, our uh, inner self or the master within. If we give that to the outer self, we'll find that we're in a variety of challenging uh, crises or uh, experiences or things that uh, teach us to do differently. You know, in the Rosicrucian order, we learn that pain is a signal. And so that's something where uh, we accept it as something that we can learn from and how to live more in harmony uh, with our surroundings. Rosicrucians have a very beautiful term called harmonium, which means harmony in all, in all senses or all levels. Harmony with our uh, physical surroundings, uh, but also harmony within our body and the health and vitality that they are, the harmony in our relationships, but also the deepest sense of harmony with the, the divine within, 
which is ultimately a state of ecstasy, which we experience to a degree in our meditation. I mentioned explicitly some laws during our mystical exercise. And by mysticism, I mean the art and science of love, the direct experience of reality, or what Rosicrucians actually call actuality. It's also the full maturation of the human being can be thought of as, as, as mysticism. The law of service is an extremely important law and one always to be kept, kept in mind. In a way, it in part justifies much of our existence. But the service is for others, yes, but also for our own, our own well, well-being. But always keep in mind, if we want to grow and learn, we need to be giving back, just as those who have helped us along the way gave back to us, and even in a greater measure to the degree that we can. And there's a great deal of meaningness that comes with that. If we're not applying the law of service in our life, there'll tend to be a annoying sense of lack, and not a great sense of enjoyment a great sense of satisfaction. But we don't do this for those things. They will just come. Just as when we radiate love and be well and being to others, it was had a tonic effect on us. I mentioned at times the law of vibration. That's something that the Rosicrucians talk about, the cosmic keyboard. In a way in life, we're playing a great piano, just like the one, the upright piano behind me. We just, we, we can touch on various aspects of our being or existence, um, like a, a great musician. You know, self-mastery means not only mastery in a particular area of study, it means mastery of life itself. Vibration uh, being fundamental in all things. I know some of you studied physics engineering and know about uh, Fourier series, uh, for example, a special uh, result to look, help you understand more detail than uh, how everything is vibrational. But back to the idea of vibration, Everything is number, which is a profound Pythagorean conception associated with our traditional traditional order. But all things in our life, just like we talked about the different phases of mystical unfoldment in earlier sessions, like from the awakening to mystical union, these things happen in a vibration. Um, we know there's various ups and downs for the in our life for that the outer the outer self, but our inner wise nature knows that we can transcend that. There's a, a degree of imperturbability that we can develop. And we embrace these, these lessons, these experiences. Part of that law of vibration is the law of manifestation. I mentioned earlier in our meditation, it could also be called the law of triangle. We saw it in uh, um, Michael Mayer's diagram, but also the law of perfection. For any creation in our life, there needs to be two polarities coming together, the law of polarity, law of duality. It could be light in life, uh, or it could be something like in creating an elect, uh, electricity to flow, the positive and negative charge need to come blend together perfectly. And then the electricity will happen. There'll be, the, there'll be the movement or the development. It can also be things like when we're seeking employment, we have to prepare ourselves with skills and uh, um, necessary things that are in demand, but also have to be on the lookout for what people are saying and searching to be in, the right, be in the right place at the right time, so to speak. And when those come together, there can be the opportunity to achieve the, the employment or the manifestation. Often when we're frustrated in our lives, if we can look at how, what, what particular part of the triangle, which pole of the triangle, those of the base say the two parts, which one isn't fully developed or, or are they either fully developed to have the manifestation we're looking for? It seems like a very simple law, uh, but it's a very profound and far reaching one. You know, much of existence has, uh, can be viewed as having these laws and principles. Much of, much of life and looking around can seem like, well, it's chaos or it's chaotic or it's like, a, it's like a, uh, um, uh, something that's been given with a, uh, encrypted. But when we have the laws and principles of life. It's like we have, the, we have the cryptogram, we have the key that unlocks and we can go through and things are, there's a great deal of clarity. I think you've found that in your own life as you grow and mature. Many things you didn't understand as a child, now you do. I've emphasized the law of love. And you know, we talk about having life uh, well in place. Um, that is the, our health and our vitality, but also, also knowledge that we build up and, and the system and order in our life. Those are very important. And those come together well love can be sustained. It's very important to understand that yes, 
and think of love as a fundamental force, what's fundamental in the entirety of the cosmos and existence. But to have it as a sustained expression in our life, we must have light and life well in place. Then the love can, can radiate forward from us. And that's why we emphasize that in the, in the meditation. Sometimes you'll find in relationships, for example, that love, love takes many forms. In English language, I know we just have the one word for love, unlike in Greek, but love has various forms or expression of that deeper spiritual love. In relationships, sometimes we can think, well, it was very loving, but why, why, aren't, uh, why isn't the person loving you now or why not experience that as much? Well, if you look at well, how light and life are not be fully matching up now, um, that is your key and how to uh, reconstruct that or how to change things for better in your own life. I mentioned law of creativity earlier and often creativity is thought of as something that's for artists or very inspired people or geniuses, but actually it's something for us every day, always to be working with. It may be in the way that you design, you create a meal or design an outing with others or the way you set up your bedroom uh, to be conducive to uh, um, how you wish to live and things that you really um, find very valuable in this setting. Or maybe the way that you do your work or the, maybe the way that you work with others. All these things comply the law of creativity. It's very important for it to be active in our life. Otherwise, we'll tend to feel that our emotions are bottled up or that we're getting stifled or feeling not having that fullness of life that the Master Yeshua has spoken about. Related to all these things is what we call the law of respect or the law of dignity. It's very important to have at all times a great deal of respect for nature and for other persons. We can see them as an expression of the divine within. Others may have different ideas, different ways of doing things, but when we have the law of respect, there's a degree of tolerance. And often we have to be careful because when we strongly disagree with another, sometimes that allows it, causes us to dismiss them or dismiss all the other things that they know that we can learn from. And that's where the law of patience comes in. Very important law. We often think you know, we wanna get things quickly, but in life there's a law of resistance. Uh, we have to show our worthiness, our, build up our character until we're ready to see and understand things. You know, earlier I talked about voyaging on the mystical arc of knowing in a previous presentation. You can think of, well, why is sacred text written in that way? You know, why do they often express themselves as stories? Why not just like a purely philosophical text, just say, say it directly? Well, part of it is um, the mind needs to have symbols as a subconscious and the emotions activated. So we have to have intellect and the emotions, like two points of the triangle coming together for there to be initiation and wisdom. Also sacred texts in a way are veiled so that we're sufficiently prepared, mature and responsible to penetrate their meaning. And also that when we do penetrate it, we actually fully appreciate it. Also like when, if we've, a child, if they're, they're raised in a way that many things are given to them, they don't have to really, uh, press hard and move forward and have a degree of struggle in their life. What do you think that'll do as an adult? They'll be highly frustrated because they think that they're owed a lot of things when nothing is owed to us. And we have to apply all these laws and principles uh, to have uh, fullness and richness in our own lives. A lot of this happens to do with what we call the openness to learn, which is essentially the law of humility. You know, in life, there's essentially uh, two things in regard to humility. And I want to emphasize when I talk about humility, I'm not talking about humiliation. That's something quite different. That's as different as assertiveness is, which is very healthy, to aggression. So one is very healthy and the other one is based on fear. And so uh, in humility, we're talking about openness to, openness to learn from anyone, anytime. And we essentially have two choices in regard to humility. We need to be humble or we will be humbled. Life will humble us. And then we have the opportunity to be humble on our, our own terms more and then we're ready to, to, uh, to learn. You know, part of this and part of the uh, uh, law of creativity I mentioned earlier is the Rosicrucian practice in addition to meditation, which is central, 
practice of visualization. We learn very specific instructions and something that's quite valuable to do daily. You know, often um, we may find ourselves, if we ever indulge in worry, which is it's a, it's a very good habit to get out of because worry just makes the mind go circling around and around. One way to um, transmute worry or not be involved in it is to visualize. We're a co-creator with the cosmic. There's ways, there's a visualized meth method top of the Rosicrucian order, how we visualize something, build it up in our mind, and then we release it with the confidence that it'll go through the subconscious, just like mailing a letter. And be on the lookout for uh, ways for it to manifest through what people say um, or impressions that come to us, like we put together a piece of a piece of a puzzle. Um, you know, it's, um, this is a way that we can let go of, of having a lot of suffering in our life. When we're concerned about something, visualize with confidence, proceed uh, towards it. Use the, use the facilities of the outer self and the inner self as a unified way to make things happen. You know, there's a, uh, uh, essayist from a few centuries ago uh, named Michel de Montaigne. He mentioned about his life the following, and see if it rings true in our own lives to a certain extent. Uh, my life has been full of terrible misfortunes, most of which never happened. You can see the mind can go into circles and things like, oh, what's going to happen and so forth, but we can, we can direct it constructively. You see, as we mature, we increasingly realize that our circumstances are not the cause of our emotions, they're the occasion. And we actually have a degree of control but in, of our emotions in a healthy way to create greater harmony. Um, and that's why a lot of what we're doing in our life, we now realize is we're facing our fears, we're facing ourselves, and we're using the law of transmutation to um, all those things that are built up in that heat of those negative motions of the fear. When we transmute them, like the alchemists do, we feel an elation, we feel an exaltation, we feel much fully alive, and we're much more able to be of, of uh, service to others. You know, in our meditation, I talked about the law of unity. And part of it, you think that, well, you know, mysticism, we want to be one with the one. So why isn't everything just uh, undistinguished? Well, essentially it is undistinguished, but to work with our, we also work with the law of duality and we are, uh, have a temple, the physical body that houses the mighty master within or the God within. And we apply the law of duality to learn lessons um, in, in the physical world and beyond. But through that law of duality, we come back to a greater realization of the law of unity, the unified consciousness. Another important law that's often people will say is a constant is the law of change. And change is something that needs to be embraced. Now it's true, sometimes in our life, there's things that have changed. And whatever that change is, there's a, there, there is a gift with it. It may not be the gift that we wish to embrace at the time because it may be letting go or loss of something that was very important, typical to our self. But I can say too, as we grow and mature, anything of value on it, uh, we will carry forward as we spiritualize our lives. Another important law is the law of balance. When we feel out of sorts or something's aren't working so well in our life, keep in mind one thing, and we tune with the cosmic, and they're maybe still not finding something that's coming through. One thing that's helpful is to analyze with respect to the law of balance. How is the law of balance not being fulfilled in our life? Often that is an important cue to get back on track on the mystical path, back seeing a deep, deep sense of wellness, deep sense of goodness, uh, deep sense of unity in our life. Now, all of these laws I mentioned, like law of balance, they may seem some way seem, well, rather light going or innocuous, but I assure you they're exacting. If we do not apply them uh, implicitly or explicitly, we'll find that we're continuing we're getting signs in our life. And if we ignore those signs, uh, we'll lead to a crisis. But the crisis has a value that it's a great and important experience. If we embrace the lesson of it, apply the law of transmutation, we'll find that we're enriched and ennobled and back on track on the mystical path, more 
you know, part of the value of meditating daily is to highly develop the conscience. So we have a sense of purity of action, purity of thought. When we're feeling like we're getting off track in those things, use the conscience, use that experience of purity that we had in meditation to get back um, to where we know where, where we know we need to need to be. I emphasize a lot the law of gratitude. Unfortunately, with many of these laws, you invoke one, it'll often bring with it implicitly the other. And that's true of the law of gratitude. One of the easiest ways to the tomb of the cosmic is just genuinely express gratitude. All these things have to be done gen genuinely. The God within and the master within is not fooled by anything. It knows exactly why we're doing things and uh, how we, uh, we may be able to fool others temporarily and how evolved we are, or why we're doing things. We'll never fool the divine within and we'll have consequences for that. And even those who are in regular contact with us or are very astute will sense our, will sense our motive. A lot of this is somewhat like, um, you know, the experimental entombment. You can think of uh, holding two tuning forks up to each other that have the same vibrate and the same pitch. As one sounded and the other one's close, the other one will start to vibrate. If we're uplifted and noble, we'll tend to draw that out uh, in others. If our mind and our thoughts are drawn in that way, that'll assist the master within to come forward and declare itself uh, to us. You know, it's not just when we meditate that we're looking for those cosmic impressions or those deep expressions in our life, that perfect way through life. Um, it's through the entire, it may be at a meeting, it may be a challenging experience we're having with another. When we can briefly turn inward, not even with closing our eyes, go to that deeper, wiser part of ourself, we'll be struck that guidance will come forward or a sense of what to do comes forward. And that's built up and strengthened by the regular practice of meditation. In a way, we're banking, we're building as we meditate, we're banking up our strength and well being and our capacity of guidance in our life. It becomes a way of life, just flows throughout our life. It's very important to apply the law of concentration. And it, sometimes it's surprising to know that, you know, concentration is a lot of thought of, you know, I'm doing a test or something, I got to really use energy to concentrate. Actually, no. What you really need to have to concentrate well is to be relaxed. And that's where doing things like meditating or breathing deeply throughout the day of your regular pace. If, you're, if it's comfortable to breathe through the nostrils uh, only, if, it's, if your health condition allows that, have that as a general, general practice in your daily life, that'll immediately have a, a relaxation response, particularly in the exhalations with the vagus nerve. And uh, there's, a, there's, a, an, a two, there's a harmonization between the two nervous systems that we learn a lot of bit in our in uh, the Rosicrucian or in our healing systems. But um, concentration um, is something that if it can be well-developed, um, you'll find that you go through life a lot easier a lot, and a lot more efficiently. Part of that is the law of suggestion. And suggestion often sounds like, well, that's something rather mild. It's actually something very strong that's done well. Uh, it can be stronger than an outer command. Because often a command we, we, get, we get either from from another or, or, or some system will tend to put our back up. The outer, the outer nature will not wish to comply. But if we can su make suggestions to ourselves, like when we did meditation, or subtly to another, but in a noble and a rich way, uh, the, the suggestion can be taken into the subconscious and it'll work on that. You see in our subconscious, that's where our habits are as laws. And throughout life, an important part of the spiritual path is ensuring that all the habits we've got that are laws in our subconscious are ones that are health giving, give to a fullness of life. There may be habits from early in our life that uh, when we were with our parents or conditions that we're living under that no longer apply. We don't have to do those anymore. There's other better ways of living and we can change that. The order teaches us how to change those laws in the sub subconscious. And part of the way that's done is through affirmation and suggestion. Now, important law that can be challenging for the outer self is the law of impersonality. One thinks, well, I like things to be very personal and so forth. And yeah, that's good. You, it's good to have that personal touch in various ways, but this is meaning something different. It means that in a way we have to transcend who we are and where uh, some to give, give those deeper insights of life. We go deep, deeper in ourselves to the divine within. We way let go of personality, let go of images. And then they'll flood back into the outer personality with uh, cult ideas we have about culture or philosophies or religious background we may have that'll close out those insights. Just also when we 
present for an organization, for example, we apply the law of impersonality. It's not about our who we are. It's about representing the greater good of that organization as we present its deeper wisdom and understanding. And this is something that the outer self, as it may have a challenge with, but as the outer self in tunes with the God within, the master within, and works and realizes it's not the one that's in truly in charge, but the divine within, it will actually find that it's strengthened, it's ennobled, and it's enriched. In a way, the outer nature has to surrender. And initially, won't, is maybe that surrender doesn't sound like, oh, isn't that losing? But no, no, it's actually letting, letting go of things that were never the outer self's jobs, were the master within's self job to guide us uh, perfectly through life in a very beautiful, harmonious, deeply meaningful way. I'll mention a few more laws and then uh, we'll open things up for uh, some comments and questions uh, through the chat and uh, the uh, unmuting. Um, Sora Karen in a little while is going to paste in the group chat also some references that are online resources from the Rosicrucian Order and Mark uh, to various things that I've been I've been talking about. I think many of the resources are ones that you're familiar with or maybe all familiar with, but in case you're not, uh, that we posted uh, shortly for you. A very important law is the law of purification. You've been mentioning it and applying it in a variety variety, variety of ways. That uh, I'll say a little bit more about that in the order we stress the building up of character. Um, that um, you know, a person's word is their bond. Someone is trustworthy. You can trust them with their last dime. We want to we want to have that build up the the character that we can be a living, enriching example to others. That they'll look to us. They can trust us. Um, not because of so much of our outer nature, but because we're working with the divine nature within us, which is that one soul that has all knowledge and infinite resources, that is unshakable foundation for our life. I'll mention the law of attraction. And you can see, just as we're attracted today to those spiritual teachings or the spiritual path of the Rosicrucian orders, or to various, various different persons in our life, you can look at what we're attracted to in our life tells us a lot about our, ourselves and uh, sort of way holds up the mirror to, mirror to us. We can look at our entire lives in some ways as a psychodrama of uh, different persons in our lives are playing out different parts of our ourselves. But uh, we can apply the law of traction in a variety of ways. You know, I mentioned earlier about visualizing in the mind and then releasing as a co-creator of the cosmic. We're applying the law of tra attraction there to bring manifest things into our life from this from a spiritual plane and the conscious plane into physical manifestation with confidence. Again, that's the law of attraction. Uh, it's applied in a variety of ways. The final law I'll mention is the law of correspondence, which we've talked about as above or so below, the mirroring of the microcosm, the macrocosm. That, that in itself, in a way, is a key to why we are here, where we're going, and where we've been. Um, and all these things are brought together through the law of love the law of cosmic attunement. So I'm going to make a few conclusions and then we'll open up our discussion for a little while. So the laws of life take part in both light and life. Life because it pertains to understanding, which is most succinctly expressed or summed up in law. Life because in our daily life, it is the vital life force of the cosmic essence within us that is being expressed and directed. Just as persons well-trained in a trade or profession or highly proficient in some work or task must have mastered certain laws and demonstrate them continually in order to fulfill their duties. So the student of mysticism needs to understand and apply a wide range of laws and principles in order to accomplish the duties and creative expression for their mission in life and all the lines of service they are called upon in doing and growing and maturing daily. In this perfect blending of light and life is the mighty and astounding coming forth of love and the increasing rapport with the cosmic and our full maturation and self-mastery and mystical union. 